let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to be doing in here. Now, it is kind of designed to be viewed in sequence to start with. We're going to be going through a lot of the major controls and then a lot of the fine tuned controls and then the menu system. And so what we're going to be doing in details, first off, I got to start off with a few little camera basics. I know a lot of you know what you're doing, but I got to cover a few of these things in there. Then we're going to go through the exposure system, talking about all the different ways to control your exposure and really get the right one. The camera has a very sophisticated focusing system with a lot of subject detection, so there's a lot to talk about in there. With the electronic shutter in here and the absence of a traditional shutter, a lot to talk about in the drive settings. We'll take a tour of the camera, looking at all the rest of the buttons and dials to figure out what they do. We'll look at all the different options that you have for the viewfinder and the monitor. We're going to go through the I menu, which is kind of this real quick menu where you can access a lot of the most important features. Special section on video shooting, where we go through a lot of the different codecs and ways of shooting. We'll go through the camera connections, all the batteries and things you hook up to the camera. We'll then take a quick look at the available lenses and some recommendations in there. And then the big final last half of the class is we go through the menu system. Each of the different tabs, each of the different items. And finally, I come to the field setup section where I give you some tips on how I would set this camera up in the field for a variety of purposes. Now, as part of the full class, there is a PDF that you can print out or you can view electronically, however you want, that goes along with the class. Now, in here, there's a number of things. Kind of the main thing in my mind is the menu system. I have the menu system laid out on a number of different pages. And so, if you're visual like I am, like a lot of photographers are, it's kind of nice to be able to see everything laid out so you can really scan around and see what's there. I also have my recommendations on how to start as far as uh, the initial setup of your camera and you're gonna to wanna to make adjustments from there. I also have all the menu without my recommendations so that you can put all your own notes and settings in there so you know how you like to have things set up. I also have some graphics that I have from the class that are very complicated. We call them ugly slides. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, so you have all that information you can go through later, as well as some of the field setup information in there as well. So you have it on screen and in paper and right in front of your eyes so it's easy to reference later on. So that comes, as I say, with the full purchase of the class. All right, so that is the class. As I say, it's going to be a very big one. It's going to be a very in-depth one. This is the type of class that you'll probably want to take maybe one section per day and then uh, kind of move slowly through your pace through the class uh, in that way. Now, as we are in the class, I am going to be referring to things that we're going to be talking about later on in the class in the menu system. And so I'm going to give you this menu reference box. And, you know, if you want to change this particular feature, well, here's where you do it. And that's when you can stop the video and go in and change it for those of you who want to go in and change it. If you don't want to change it, uh, you can not do anything and you can just kind of wait to that later part of the class and then you can make a decision when we hit that uh, point again. Now, sometimes I will refer back to earlier sections in the class because I try to only explain things once in here if possible. There's a few exceptions. Uh, so I might refer back to an earlier section where I fully explained how that particular feature worked. All right, now this class is on the Nikon Z9. This is the priority in this class. Uh, in photography, there's a lot of things that are important, getting to know your subject, composition and lighting and variety of other things. And yeah, that's all really nice and good, but in here we're talking about the Nikon Z9. And so I wanna really talk about how to get the best, highest quality images shooting out in the field or in the studio as this case. Now, one thing that I am not going to cover in this class, and that is tethered shooting, LAN connection, ethernet connection, it's that whole ball of wax where you're connecting this up to external devices. And the reason I'm not doing that is because it is a large rabbit hole of other options. It would probably double or triple the length of this class, depending on how much coverage we wanna have of the different types of systems out there. So. Uh, if you are really interested in this sort of instruction, uh, just let me know. And if there's enough people, I'll make a class on it. But there will need to be enough people to make that worthwhile to make a class on it. So we're going to really be concentrating on how to get the best quality images into this camera. I am also a little bit biased. I like to figure out how to do things manually and to get the highest quality options. There are some interesting options in here where you can do kind of 
filters of scenes and have the camera do some automated things for you. And it's nice and I'll show you how to do it, but I want to show you how to get the highest quality images with manual operations. So it's something that you can repeat and do on a regular basis. Now this last one's going to be a tough one in this class because just by the very nature of what this camera is, I'm expecting a lot of you are very experienced professionals, experts in the field of photography, but there's a lot of basic things that I need to explain because, well, I've been around the block long enough to know that there's a lot of people who are missing a few of the basics. Now, we're not going to go too basic, but I do want to cover all the bases that I think are important for anyone who really wants to know this camera. We're not going to dwell on them. We're not going to spend a lot of time on them, but I am going to err on the side of explaining something rather than just assuming everybody knows what it means. And so please bear with me if there is something that you already know. This is for the benefit of everybody in the photographic community. All right, now with this camera, there are a lot of resources about learning how things work. The camera comes with a 914 page reference guide, which is really the manual for it. There's also a basic one, which really doesn't give you much information at all. Uh, then there are additional guides for some of the firmware updates that have happened out there. It is not my intention to try to explain or read everything in the instruction manual to you in this class. I am trying to cover well, let's say 98, 99% of what most photographers are going to want to know and need to know for operating this camera in a more condensed, easy to understand form than those instruction manuals. Uh, they are still helpful for detailed specifications. There's some compatibility and further info into some nuances that we may not be going into. Because uh, once again, we're concentrating on trying to shoot in the highest quality photos in camera and there are other things that this camera can do. So there is still some reason that you might need to go into those guides beyond this class, but we're going to try to cover most everything most people need. Uh, just a quick little bit on Nikon history. If anyone's new to Nikon at this point, don't expect it, but possible. Uh, one of the things I wanted to highlight with this list is all the different lens mounts and types of lenses that Nikon has had over the years. And so we are at this point right now, we're about five years in to their new Z system. And they have uh, pretty much abandoned their DSLR system at this point. And so they are going full on. We're still early on as far as lenses go. There's still a lot of new lenses coming out. But Nikon has a great history. They have a tradition of keeping a lens mount around for a long period of time. In 1959, they came out with the Nikon F and they kept that same basic lens mount or what is that, like 70 years as their main lens mount. Now, granted, it's gone through an evolution of changes where there is some incompatibility when you go far enough, but they've generally stuck to their guns and really uh, been very good for photographers in that sense. Now, the way Nikon system lays out today as of the recording of this class is they have four main categories of cameras and lenses, and the Z9 falls into the full frame mirrorless category, which is seemingly where they're putting their greatest emphasis at this time with bodies and lenses. They do make cropped versions, mirrorless, a smaller sensor size, so they have a different set of lenses that they can work with, but it is the same lens mount on the camera. So you can use the same Z lenses on all of those crop frame cameras. Now they are technically still selling, possibly still making, I'm not sure, the DSLRs. And so their full frame DSLRs were a favorite of professionals for well, probably about 20 years. And those were a basic match a progression of their film cameras, which uh, were going for decades. Uh, right now they only have one crop frame DSLR. And I imagine that that'll stick around for a little while. And then all the DSLRs will disappear at some point. Now the lenses that go with the mirrorless system are the Z lenses. And so these are the lenses that you want to look for for the Z9. We'll talk more about these in the lens section. But there are ZDX lenses. DX is Nikon's code word for crop frame lenses, which means they produce a smaller image circle and they do not have full coverage on the Z9. You can use them on the Z9. You can take pictures with them and it's generally okay. You're not going to get full resolution. You're not going to get full coverage from side to side, but you technically can use them, although you're probably not going to want to use them. All right. A little bit on the care and handling in the instruction manual. There is page after page of the warnings. Generally, you know, don't do dumb things with it. 
keep it dry. I'll talk about weather resilience in just a moment. So they tell you it's not an underwater camera. It is susceptible to water damage. So you do need to be careful with it in that regards. As far as non-Nikon accessories, Nikon, of course, would like you to purchase Nikon accessories for your camera. And generally, yeah, Nikon lenses and flashes and batteries and all that stuff works really good. You are going to be sticking in other types of memory cards, which is probably going to be just fine. There's a lot of different lenses. Well, not a lot. There are some lenses that you can put on this that are not Nikon that are going to be completely fine. Uh, they have uh, they have uh, protection on their copy on their lens mounts, so you're not going to find a lot of lenses available for this, at least here in the early years of the Z system. I would definitely stick with the Nikon batteries. You might be able to save 20, 40, 50 bucks on a cheaper battery, but on a $5,000 camera, you really hanker in to save 50 bucks on a battery. Um, that may not work as well and probably wouldn't work as well as the Nikon. I would stick with the Nikon batteries in that case and uh, any sort of electronic hookup. And I much prefer the Nikon flash over other flashes if you're looking to do wireless systems, communication, TTL. For simple studio stuff, use whatever you want. That's easy. There's a PC hookup on the camera and it works fine with pretty much any lighting system. But for the automated stuff, I like to stay with Nikon. Uh, there's always goofy things in the warnings. My favorite one out of Nikon's is do not use while walking. So apparently this is not a good paparazzi camera. I kind of doubt that, but at least that's what they're saying. As far as the construction of the camera, magnesium alloy chassis, which is what a lot of the cameras are these days, it is a really well-built camera. It's one of the heavier cameras on the market, and it's probably one of the tougher ones as well. Now, specifically when it comes to the weather sealing, it is a weather sealed camera. It's got weather seals around all the different openings on it. It will depend a little bit on how weather sealed your lens is. So that's an issue to look at when you look at lenses. And it's got the same weather resilience as the Nikon D6, which is their professional DSLR camera at this time, which is part of a lineage of cameras that has been really, really well protected in that regard. So it's about as good as you can get. If you are going to be shooting an event that's say going to be out in the rain for an hour or two or three hours, I would probably still look at having a rain cover. Um, going out for a rain for a relatively short burst is probably fine. Being out there for a long period of time with a light mist is probably fine. But if you're going to be in a heavy downpour for any notable length of time, I would get a rain cover on there. Uh, it just seems wise. All right, so preparing the camera, you're going to need to have a charged battery. It takes about four hours to charge it on the battery charger. We're going to need a lens on there. You're going to need at least one memory card. There's two slots. You can put it in either slot. That's fine. But turn the camera on. Make sure your lens is in automatic focus just for this little beginning setup here. Some lenses don't have this switch, and you would need to go into the camera body's menu to change that on, but most lenses will have a switch on it to turn it on. Now this camera has a mode button on the top. We're going to press that and turn the back dial till we get to P for program mode and then we're going to take a test photo. So let's go ahead and do that with our camera right now. So uh, the on switch is collar right around the shutter release and what we're going to do is we're going to press the mode button up here and we're going to look in the back of the camera and if we turn our dial we can change the exposure mode through the four different simple options. And we're just gonna go for program. It's in an automatic focusing system right now. We're gonna press down on the shutter release and take a photo and not exactly real exciting, but at least my camera is ready for today's class. Uh, sometimes you might need to charge your battery or make sure you got the right memory card uh, in your camera. And I just wanna make sure that you're set up for this class because I want you with your camera in your hand I want you taking test photos and practicing things as we go through this class. So one of the most important things in any camera, but especially so in this camera, is the firmware. Firmware is the software that runs all the operations on the camera. And this camera has seen a couple of significant updates since it has come out. And so we are currently at version 3.10 right now. I'm going to show you how to get to that. And Nikon does make changes from time to time. They might add features, they might fix bugs, they might improve performance, they might fix a language misspelling. 
Uh, if they're significant, that's more of interest. If it's not so significant, then we're not going to be too worried about it. But let me show you how to go into the menu system and find what firmware you have. So we're going to dive into the menu. So you press the menu button. You can go up and down through different items. And if you go left, you go to the tabs. And here we want to come down to the wrench tab, come to the right, and we have individual items. And we want to go to the bottom of the list. So this goes down, 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 down. And down near the bottom, very last item is firmware version. There's a little arrow to the right. So if we go to the right, we can see which firmware we are at. So C stands for camera. This is camera version 3.10. There's also lens firmware that can be updated as well. We're concentrating on the camera firmware right now. And uh, if you have new firmware in there, you can go to update and this will update the new firmware. Now this will only show up when you have a memory card that has new firmware in there. So the way that you do this is you need to go to Nikon's website and look up and find the official Nikon Z9 firmware update and download it to a memory card. From there you're going to put the memory card in the camera, come to the firmware section of the menu where I just showed you, and you will update the uh, firmware at that point. Now I always like to reformat my memory cards before I do a firmware update and then after I do a firmware update I'm going to format those cards again. So as I said Nikon has made some major changes in their firmware. If they do have a major change after the recording of this class I intend to make an update video that'll tell you about the new features and things that are going on. If there's a little update there's rumors right now that they're going to update the shutter sounds so that you could have a cat meow when you press the shutter. I'm probably not going to film an update for that one, but um, if it's more significant, well, then you can maybe expect to see a little additional video sometime later on down the road. Now, the other important thing is that people are going to customize this camera and they're going to do a lot of that. And if you've been doing that, and you feel like you've maybe messed the camera up a little bit and you would like to reset it back to the factory default settings, well, you can do so or not. If you've got your camera all set up fine, that's fine. Just take it from where it is and we'll, we'll go through and explain things. But if you do want to reset it, which is what I'm going to do to mine right now so that you know that I'm operating on a camera that has not been tweaked with in any way, we're going to dive in to the setup menu and it's just one step above where the firmware version was. And we're going to reset this camera because I want it factory fresh, you might say. And I'm going to confirm that, yes, I do want this. It takes a moment, turn the camera off, and then I'm going to turn it back on. And we are as good as brand new. So we are really set to begin this class. All right, folks, that's your introduction to the Z9 class. We have a lot of work to do in here, so get yourself ready.